Recently, many of you let me know that you enjoy watching a video talking about upcoming ships, but that the first five covered just wasn't enough. And so you've asked to see five more ships under development, with some thoughts and personal expectations for those still in the pipeline. I'm Farrister, and this video will share some thoughts about a different five upcoming ships that were particularly popular requests in the last video. Once again, since these ships aren't yet available in-game, these are my thoughts based on the materials published, much of which may change. So this is a little healthy speculation, and please treat it accordingly, and not as a promise of exactly what will be delivered. And, many of these ships have been in development for many years after being on sale. To some of you, that's okay, and to some of you, that's not okay. Both perspectives are fine, but this video won't really cover that. We're here to talk about ships today, and so that's the primary focus for this one. So, all of that said, here's the first ship up for discussion. The Polaris is a torpedo corvette. It's a little bigger than the current Hammerhead in-game, and is, at time of recording, set to be with the EU vehicle content team. The primary role of the Polaris is to use four large size 10 torpedoes to hammer into larger targets, and seems to be balanced to go up against ships of a similar size to itself, to slightly larger. And those size 10 torpedoes, which are a step up from those on the Eclipse or Retaliator, could potentially be damaging to larger, unescorted ships. The facilities aboard could make the Polaris an interesting platform, as there's a medical bay and a small hangar bay, so this could be a really interesting ship for a small group operating away from home. Indeed, much of the vehicle description talks about operating as a patrol ship, with search and rescue and light strike missions in the design brief. The Polaris seems to sit in the small capital size genre, if that's not an oxymoron, with the potential to be a long range and self-sustaining. Outside of the torpedo armament, there are five manned turrets and two remote turrets, which clearly would indicate a large player count for the Polaris. That said, by ignoring the turrets, a smaller group might be able to operate the Polaris in more of a hit-and-run role, which could be quite interesting. In terms of the theory crafting side of things, I don't expect the Polaris to be soloing fully, competently crewed player capital ships like the Idris or Javelin. I'd imagine that the torpedoes, whilst powerful, will just be too easy to shoot down for the defensive gunners or fighters on those ships. But, in the chaos of a large-scale battle, I'd expect those torpedoes to be much more of a threat if left unchecked, with high damage potential, set against a relatively low crew requirement for the Polaris. Moreover, the versatility to be also able to crew up the turrets and undertake a variety of other roles, makes the Polaris a potentially interesting ship. Next up, the Misk Endeavour, the big, modular capital ship. Not so much about combat, but more about everything else you can think of. Versatile, customizable, something to make your own. The concept is pretty cool. There's a detachable front section, which you can fly off and do smaller ship stuff with, and then there's a large main section with different modules that you can select according to your own preference. Hospital ship? Put modular hospital bays and a hangar bay on, and you're good to go. Space farming? Attach the biodomes and grow your greens to your heart's content. Jump point discovery. Put your long range space telescope on and find something new. It's clear to see the appeal of the concept. Here's the rub. The concept is nine years old, from a time when dreams were big, but it was easy to dream big without having to work out how that'll actually work in game. Whilst all this is clearly set out in the ambition for the endeavour, it's easy to assume that a lot of the stuff would be quite difficult to actually implement, to the point where I wonder whether it would actually be worth doing. Don't get me wrong, I'd love to see all of this stuff in-game, but from a practical perspective, 
the manpower hours that it might take to build a floating hydroponics farm set against the number of people who actually own this ship might make that disproportionate. I don't know, I'd love to be wrong. That said, the concept for this huge modular ship is fantastic, and that's why I'm excited for the MISC Endeavour. We've started big, but now we're going a little smaller with the Gatak Arylan. Based off a Xi'an design, but made more comfortable and friendly for us humans, the Rylan is an exciting upcoming cargo hauler. Sitting somewhere between the Taurus and Freelancer in actual size, it's not a particularly big ship, but it does look set to have the ability to carry far more cargo than either of those options, which makes it exciting for would-be cargo haulers. The trade-off seems to be that the cargo is transported on the outside of the ship, similar to the hull series, and so rules out the option for things like transporting ground vehicles, but all in aid of having a higher cargo capacity. The Rylan seems to be in that comfortable space for being solarable, somewhat effectively, but also having things to do for a small group of 1-3 players, with two manned turrets on offer and the materials explicitly talk about having the ability to conduct planet-side cargo operations somewhat effectively, which may also differentiate the Rylan from some of the other offerings in the whole series. And of course, there is some alien cool to this ship. Things like floating parts of the construction and triangular cargo pods set out the Rylan to be something a bit different, something a bit unique, and for many players, that'll be appealing. And all of that together make the Rylan an interesting upcoming ship. Whilst this video is a follow-up to talking about a different 5 unreleased ships, there are still many more out there, so I'm sorry if the ship you're most excited about isn't covered, it was quite difficult to choose just a few to cover off. Maybe you can let me know in the video comments, and who knows? Perhaps that might once again prompt another video to cover your preferred ship, if you enjoyed this one. Next up is another RSI ship, the Perseus. The Perseus is set to be a similar size to the Hammerhead, but where the Hammerhead is an anti-fighter platform, the Perseus is all about dealing with the Hammerhead-sized ships. The primary armament is built around dual turrets of size 7 weapons. Those are the same size as on the Ares Starfighter, except the Perseus carries four of them. Defensively, the Perseus is also set to carry two dual size 3 turrets for anti-fighter operations. All of that makes the Perseus an ideal patrol ship, able to deal with both large ships and, to some extent, small numbers of smaller fighters. Whilst the RSI website describes the Perseus as a frigate, I personally feel that the Corvette gunship is more appropriate. The Perseus looks to be an interesting player size point too, probably suited to smaller groups of players of 3-5 to five people. There's a small vehicle bay for ground vehicles, with the Ursa Rover specifically mentioned, but without the full suite of other useful stuff that the larger Polaris has. But what makes the Perseus a little different is that the use of hard weapon turrets rather than torpedoes means it'll be much harder for large ships to evade fire, and that makes the upcoming Perseus a potentially deadly adversary against some of the larger ships like the Hammerhead, Constellation and such like. The final ship for discussion today is the Kraken. There are different pronunciations out there, my local is Kraken, so we'll stick to that. This ship is huge, bigger than anything currently flyable in-game, and you'd be forgiven for seeing the resemblance to a modern aircraft carrier. The core idea is built around landing pads and hangars, with four pads for fighter-sized ships, two pads for medium-sized ships, and two internal hangar bays. That's not to say the Kraken shirks on firepower, there's a twin size 8 turret, which is a heavier gun than any of the others we've discussed today, and plenty of smaller turrets. 
and the Kraken also has a huge cargo bay, able to store all manner of cargo or potentially ammunition and supplies for the ships carried aboard. Another exciting element to the Kraken is that it could be relatively easy to implement in game. Whilst the ship is huge and clearly the modelling of that space might take some time, most of the required tech is in game, including physicalised cargo, basic docking and refuelling. Whilst there's still more finesse needed for multi-crew gameplay, the Kraken isn't waiting for a lot of advanced mechanics to make it playable. The elephant in the room is the required player count. Some players seem to have a romantic notion of solo playing a Kraken, fuelled by NPCs, server blades or perhaps unrefined copium. To me that seems very unlikely, never mind the balancing issues, the practicality of doing that seems just too much, so I expect some disappointed solo players which I've talked about before. But that's not to say the Kraken doesn't have an incredibly exciting potential. For org or big group gameplay, the ability to deploy two medium gunships or bombers, escorted by four fighters, pretty much anywhere the Kraken can jump to is exciting. And it doesn't have to be combat based, maybe it's a mining fleet with prospectors or even a couple of moles with one central place to bring all that ore back to before selling it. The idea for a group of players to have one central place to operate from, spread out in their own ships and then head back to is pretty compelling. And that's before we mention the privateer variant with the marketplace concept similar to the merchantman but at scale, where different shops and stalls can sell various goods. So all in all the Kraken very much has exciting potential. Hopefully it's been an interesting exposition there on some of the upcoming ships that seem particularly interesting. If so you might press that like button to let me know I should make more videos like this and if you're not already subscribed to the channel you might like to do that too so that YouTube knows it should show you more videos of a similar nature. Otherwise and as always, thank you for watching.